the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Each season of the year brings special problems for the rangers. And fortunately, the problems are the same each year with each season. This is the restless time of the year for man and beast. The end of winter is in sight, and the promise of spring gives birth to what we call spring fever. A few mild days here and there only serve to stimulate the surge of spring fever in our blood. But the few mild days here and there cause other things to stir and surge as well. And this spells headache for the rangers. Think we're going to make it up the grade this time, Charlie? I sure, Herman. That double diesel can pull a mountain of freight cars. He always crawls this grade over Shady River. You should know that. Charlie, I haven't had this run for three years. You kind of forget after that long. Yeah, I forgot about that. Charlie, he isn't going to make it. I sure, Herman. Them missiles were pulling her heavy. Old them ain't flunked this run yet. We're stopping. I told you we can't make it. Well, you'd better get down to the track and protect the rear. Watch your step. We're on the trestle. I'm going. Call him on the intercom and ask him what's up. Lem, what's the big idea? You run out of gas? This is no place to stop. Hey, Charlie, is the caboose on the trestle? can't tell because of that curve. Sure, we're on the trestle. Uh, do me a favor, will you? Go on out on the trestle and tell me what you see down on the river, right under the bridge. Well, sure. Don't go away. I'll be right back. You don't have to tell me why we stopped, Charlie. I know. You do? Yeah, I'll take a look down on the river. Lem wanted us to check that ice jam. Great day in the morning. Look at it. Come on, let's get off this trestle. Right. Don't bother killing the flare. It'll burn out. Come on. Lem, let's get off this trestle. Don't spare the horses. Hey, Charlie, you better drop a message off at the next telegraph station. You said it, Lem. Get that locomotive up there full speed ahead. If that bridge goes, this railroad's in trouble. Big trouble. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Oh, Bill, this is John Bostrom. Oh, yes, John. How's the number one superintendent? Worried. Oh? About what? Bill, the hotshot freight passed over the Shady River trestle about a half an hour ago, and they sent word back that there's an ice jam building up on the river at the bridge. Well, that figures. With three days of warm weather that we've had. Bill, I'd be mighty obliged to you if you'd take a look at it. You know, if that bridge goes out, all the missiles and jet engines we highball over that bridge, well, we'd be in mighty serious trouble. John, I understand your concern. I'd be glad to take a run out to the bridge and see what's going on. I'd be mighty obliged to you, Bill. And don't mention it. I'll jump in my car and take a look right away. I'll uh, let you know what I find. Thanks. I'll be waiting to hear from you. I just hope we haven't waited too long. your trestle, young feller. It sure isn't. This is the main line track. 
Well, that ice jam doesn't look so bad from here. Come on, Ralph. Stumpy. We'll go down to the river and take a close look. Who do you uh, think we are, mountain goats? <laughs> Get going, Billy. Okay. <laughs> hey, not so fast now. I ain't as limber as I used to be once upon a time. Take your time, Stumpy. That water's awfully cold. Don't remind me. Ah, this is far enough for now. Boy, look at those pieces of ice. They sure are big ones, all right. That jam doesn't look so bad. Maybe a few sticks of dynamite would break them up enough to let them pass. This young fella's got a good idea. What do you say, Bill? I say it should work. Let's get the gear out of the truck and make up some bundles of explosive. Right. This will be work and fun at the same time. Boy, I never realized so many trains pass over this bridge. That's the fourth one since we've been here. That's two each way. Unless I'm mistaken, about 20 trains a day pass over this trestle. 20 each way? Yeah. Well, that's 40 trains a day. No wonder the superintendent's worried. Hey, did you see the missiles and jet engines on that last one? Sure did, sonny. This is a main blood vessel, all right. A uh, main artery, Stumpy. Well, that's what I said. Uh-huh. Well, I got two bundles taped up. Three sticks and a cap. And a long fuse. Well, fellas, as soon as I put on my hobnail boots, we'll be ready. Great day in the morning. Look what's coming. They even got compact trains now. <laughs> uh, Stumpy, you always have the correct remark for every occasion. Well, thank you kindly. What brings you all the way out here on a hand car? I've got ice jams on the brain. Say, uh, will you fellas help me lift the hand car off the track? I don't want it run over by a full-size train. Well, sure, John. Uh, uh, grab a hold, fellas. There we go. There, there. that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Bill, uh, how's the ice jam look? Not bad at all, John. In fact, we think we can clear it out with a few bundles of dynamite. Oh, that's wonderful news. The center pier of the bridge being right in the middle of the river caused me lots of worry. We were just getting ready to set the charges. Oh, don't wait on me. Go right ahead. Let's go, men. Watch your step, John. That's awfully cold water down there. Uh, thanks, Ralph. I will. Uh, Ralph, give me the bag with the bundles and the wire. Here you are. Bill, what are you going to do? Nothing spectacular. Just walk out there and place these charges in the right places so we can blow up this jam. <laughs> you make it sound like a walk around the block on a sunny day. Be careful. It's dangerous out there. Don't worry. I've got spike boots on. Pay out the wires slowly, Ralph, so we don't snag. Yes, sir. Don't slip. <laughs> Tell me something, will you, Stumpy? Uh, sure, shoot. How can you fellows be so relaxed in the face of such danger? Well, it's this way, John. Uh, first of all, we're trained to be calm in the face of danger. All kinds of danger. You know, there's an old saying around here, keep your head and save your life. That's true, but isn't Bill being a little reckless going out there in that ice the way he is? Mary, look, reckless young feller. He's calculated all the risks. He has? Well, certainly. That comes from years of experience with danger of all sizes and shapes and forms. <laughs> Don't you kid yourself, sonny. We ain't the suicide kind. We figure the risk and the danger involved and how to overcome it quickly and safely. Now you watch where he's walking. See? Head and step near the edge of that ice jam. As it might be thin, he'd plunge into the river. Also, those hobnail boots give him sure footing. Yeah, I guess you're right. The 
It sure gives me the willies watching him out there. Well, I'll agree to that. But there's one thing you forget, John. Oh? What's that? Somebody's got to do the job. Unless you want your bridge to go smash into the river. That can't happen. Well, relax your willies. Oh, uh, there's one more important point I overlooked to answer your question. What if something goes wrong, even though everything has been carefully planned? Stop reading my mind. <laughs> you see, Sonny, Bill, Ralph, and me, and quite a few of the rest of the Rangers are Christians. What does that mean? I'm a Christian, too, but I wouldn't go out there. I'm no coward, either. Didn't say you was. I didn't think it, either. You say you're a Christian? Of course. I believe in God. I go to church... Try to do right by my fellow man? I'd say I'm a pretty good Christian. You know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Huh? Well, uh, no. Well, we do. That's why we're not afraid in face of danger if something goes wrong. If we're killed, our soul and spirit go to be with the Lord. Well, uh, I guess maybe I'm not a, a real Christian after all, if uh, what you say is true. We're all set now to blow up the jam. Uh, I certainly hope it moves the ice out after all the work you've gone through, Bill. Now we'll soon find out. Got your plunger wired, Ralph? Wired for sound. Well, make noise. Look at those flying chunks of ice. There goes the jam down the river. Oh, that's fine work, Bill. Very fine work. You fellas sure do know your stuff. <laughs> you said it. Anytime you're in a jam, call us. We're the best jam busters you ever saw. Hey, what's that you're reading, Stumpy? Yeah, this is the new seed catalog that just come in the mail. Say, uh, how do you like this flower seed? They call it the honesty or money plant. <laughs> I thought that money didn't grow on trees. <laughs> how can you tell which grows on this one? Honesty or money? <laughs> well, if it's money, the plant must grow only nickels and dimes. Because it ain't big enough to grow dollars and half dollars. <laughs> Say, well, you two cut it out. I'm trying to get this report finished. Say, have you ever seen strawberries climb? Do they have them, too? Well, read it for yourself. Why, you're right. It says climbing strawberries. They sure must be hard to round up for eating with them climbing all around the place. Sure glad they ain't running. Will you two, uh... Ranger headquarters. Hello, Bill. Oh, hi, Archie. What's new? Nothing much. Just waiting for spring to come. So are Stumpy and Ralph. They're, uh, looking over the seed catalog. That's what I called you about. The seed catalog? <laughs> no, the coming of spring. Oh, good. I was, uh, going to say, don't use Stumpy's catalog. It's a little wacky. Uh, what's on your mind at the coming of spring? Bill, this warming trend is going to stick around for another few days. In fact, it's going to get quite mild. Wonderful. Warm weather can't come too soon for me. I heard about the ice jam at the Shady River Trestle. Oh? We cleared that out several days ago. Your job isn't over. Oh? With this mild weather, I figure that the Shady River ought to be getting all the melt off from the big moose... Little Moose, Beaver Creek, and the Big Six Country. Hmm. When? She ought to start rising late tomorrow. When will the Shady Crest? That's a tough question. But you're going to have more trouble than flood water. Ice? Mm-hmm. The Big Six will start sliding a lot of ice in two or three days unless the temperature drops. And that's going to give you problems at the trestle. Thanks, Archie. I'll check into it right away. 
I appreciate the early warning. Don't mention it. But you guys are going to be in a real jam if this jam materializes. Stumpy, are you still reading that seed catalog? Well, I gotta have something to do while we ride up to the headwaters of the Shady, don't I? Say, uh, these are awful mean flowers. Mean flowers? What kind are those? Snapdragons. <laughs> yeah, they got them here with and without teeth. Oh, no. Now, uh, here's one for you. It's an apple tree that has five different kinds of apples. Five different kinds. Yep. And the poor thing is a dwarf tree. <laughs> I guess it gets plum tuckered out just trying to keep the right apples growing on the right branches. Oh, come on, Stumpy. What do you mean, come on? If you was that tree and you got things mixed up, why, hard telling what might happen. Why, you... Suppose you was growing yellow transparents, Jonathan's, and delicious apples, and you got confused. You'd have Jonathan's delicious yellow transparents, and you'd be eating something you can see through, which would be nothing. And if you can see through them, how do you know they was there? Boo! What a mess. Uh, that tree stays dwarfed just from worrying what might happen. Stumpy, you're a nut. <laughs> if the price is right, I might grow some of them, too. Boy, Archie wasn't joking about the ice breaking off in the Big Six and falling into the rivers. Yep. Every little creek is now a river with this fast thaw. Those large pieces of ice don't break up in the river before they reach the trestle. We're going to have a great A jam on our hands. Say, can't the railroad route their trains over another line until this all clears up? Hey, you might have an idea there, young feller. What do you think, Bill? Like Stumpy said, you might have something there, young feller. Let's go have a talk with the superintendent. Ralph, you have an excellent idea. I have? Yes, you do, but uh, unfortunately, there's a fly in the ointment. Then my idea isn't so hot. Here, take a look at this map. See this? This uh, junction line here runs right through Central City. and We could use it, but it's only a single track. But these are passing sightings, aren't they? Right. Then the problem's solved. This is too easy, Ralph. Too easy. Stumpy's right. You see, Ralph... There's one thing you couldn't know about. Like Stumpy said, it's too easy. Forty trains a day ride the Shady River Trestle and our main line, which is two tracks. And of those 40 trains, three of them are missile-hauling trains going to Florida. And ten inbound trains carrying missile parts and jet engine parts. And then three more trains a day carrying nothing but jet engines. Now, that means that 16 of the 40 trains highball along the main line and they stop for nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing. Except, of course, fuel and maintenance stops. Otherwise, they run wide open. So with 16 highball fast freights that must go through and 24 regular freights, wow, that's like pouring five gallons of water into a drinking glass. There just isn't enough room. Right. You put your finger right on it, Ralph. Right on my sore spot. Your sore spot in this sword is going to be... If all that ice we seen at the headwater starts pushing your trestle around... Bill, uh, you haven't said a word. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we'd better go out and have a look at that trestle. Oh, no. She's a-building fast. Dynamite ain't gonna help this time. Listen to that trestle strain. 
pressure is being applied to the center piers. Boy, that sends duck bumps all the way up and down my spine. Me too, Sonny. Yeah, Bill. That trestle can't stand that pressure if it builds anymore. Yeah, Bill, come on. Let's make us some ideas. Don't let us down now. How far away do uh, you have some loaded gondolas, John? What kind of load? I don't care. Sand, gravel, ore, coal, scrap. Just so long as they're loaded. You can get them here shortly and run them onto the trestle to apply downward pressure on the center pier. But Bill, that, that'll tie up one of the tracks. Well, one track is better than no track. <laughs> Charlie, uncouple that locomotive, will you? Sure thing, John. Hey, Lamb. Yes, sir. Take the engine back to the yards. Yes, sir. Yeah. He ain't groaning now. Yeah. Maybe that tonnage did the trick, Stumpy. We're going to have to stand watch, though, till this buildup of ice stops. You mean, let's not count our chickens before the eggs are laid. Right. The ice jam hasn't stopped building, nor has the pressure against the center pier. I'm afraid I'm optimistic, fellas. We've got 40 gondolas of sand on that trestle. Each one of them weighs 30 ton. Wow. There's a quarter of a million pounds up there pushing down on the center pier. Not all of that weight is on the center pier. But... There's a large amount of the total bearing down on it. Boy, I'll say there is. It ought to keep the pier fastened to the footing and the footing fastened to the river bottom. I think our troubles are over. How can more ice build up against the pier now? Any additional ice will have to pile up at the rear of the jam. You're right, John. And as it piles up at the rear of the jam, it'll exert more pressure laterally and forward. And don't forget there are tons and tons of water. Flood water cascading down the river and pushing against the jam. Uh, Bill, pardon my saying so, but I think you're building your bridges before you have to cross them. That's better than having to fish one out of the river. Well, we sure picked a nice mild spring night. To camp here by the bridge. Uh, yeah. All this fresh air is sure making me sleepy. Mm. Oh, Ralph. Ah, oh, stop it. You got me doing it. <laughs> Will you fellas close your mouths? <laughs> you two turn in. I'll take the first watch. Ah, oh, let me. You older fellas need your rest. Now, listen to the young scallywag, will you? Yes, for that, I'll take the first watch. And show you how I can stay awake. Us older fellas can take it better than you youngsters. <laughs> okay, old timer. I won't argue. I'm bushed. Good night. Well, looks like one older fellow is running out of gas. Yep. Tonight I am. Well, uh, here's one that ain't. Now you get to bed, youngsters. Okay, Stumpy. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Must have dozed off. Bill must be snoring hard. Stompy, stop groaning in your sleep. I ain't groaning. Yes, you are. Cut it out. Groaning? Groaning? Hey, what's going on, fellas? 
Listen to that trestle. You two get flares out down the track. I've got an idea, but the superintendent is going to have to move fast to save his trestle. What did you say? I said I want a jet engine, a crane, and sufficient cable to make a sling for the engine. Bill, are you crazy? Never mind personal questions. Can you get them? Yes. How, uh, how soon can you have them here? Oh, in less than an hour. Make it as less as possible. On the double, but I still think you're crazy. That could be. If you move fast enough, this crazy man can save your trestle. <laughs> Good work, John. Your men have the jet engine rigged and a very fine sling. Is your crane man willing to stick with me? Yes. He says if you can ride that engine down over the ice, he can sure stick with that crane. Fine. Now, here's the plan. We'll lower the engine on this side first and uh, close into shore. Mm -hmm. That way we can melt an opening for the flood water to run through. But it'll be along the shore and away from the center pier. Now, when this side is running good and strong, we'll move the crane and the engine to the other side and do the same thing. But don't waste any time bringing me up. Just have your man move the crane across the trestle and swing me over the ice. Now, when both sides are open, the running water is warmer than the ice, and it'll eat away at the jam as long as we can keep the two sides from jamming up. This should take the lateral pressure off the pier footing. Any questions? Oh, I, I understand, Bill. And I'll make sure that my man does. But please, don't take any more chances than you have to. If it'll help, John, I'll wear a parachute. Okay. Go away. There's no time to talk. Boy, it's working like a charm. Look at Bill tip the rear end of the engine toward the ice. Boy, that jet blast really makes juice out of those pieces of ice. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, the trestle ain't groaning anymore. He did it. Bill did it with his little jet engine. Yeah, with his little jet engine, Ralph, and his ability to face danger without fear. <laughs> Superintendent sure said a mouthful, boys and girls. After taking all safety precautions, I knew I stood a good chance of making good with my little jet on the end of a cable. That doesn't mean that I wasn't afraid or a little shaky for a while until I knew the trick worked and the ice started melting quickly. However, if I made a mistake and was killed, I have no fear of death because the Lord Jesus Christ gives me the power to overcome fear of death. I think this fact impressed our friend John so much that he's asking questions about how he can have the same kind of Christian faith. So you see, even a situation like this one gives the Christian an opportunity to witness. Now, you be sure and look for these opportunities, too, and take advantage of them. And be with us next time for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! <laughs> Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago. This is a Moody Radio Network production. <laughs>